A breakthrough by a Melbourne-based medical institute is set to drastically improve treatment for ovarian cancer. Earlier, I spoke with Sue Hegarty, Chief of the Advocacy and Support Program with Ovarian Cancer Australia. So thank you for your time. Tell us, how are you hoping that this blood test would work to detect or, or screen for ovarian cancer? Thanks, Ashley, for having us on the program. We're really excited about this new development in ovarian cancer. We're eagerly awaiting the published results of this, but what it looks like the test will be able to do is triage women who have symptoms like a, a mass to be able to work out, you know, does this woman need to see into a gynecologist, a gyne oncologist, and really work out what will be the best pathway for her. We do know that it is Australia's deadly female cancer, that it's been very stubborn to treat. The five-year survival rate just being 49%. We know we need to have more research and, and a, a test like this is a really promising sign for, for the treatment of the disease in the future. So if all goes well, what could the timeline be in terms of when this could actually be available to Australian women? So the researchers are hoping to be able to use this test to triage women um, in a surgical setting by 2025. There is still some data to be published and we eagerly await that, that news. Um, you know, like I said, Ashley, this disease is stubborn to treat. There is no current early detection test. And, you know, we're really thankful for the sector's work in this and particularly for the Ovarian Cancer Research Foundation who we work closely with who funded this research and it just shows to me why we need all Australians behind this disease you know the deadliest female cancer so we need all the dollars we can to go into research for this disease so we can help our our mothers our sisters our daughters you know we haven't seen the improvements in this disease that we have in breast cancer and we're eagerly awaiting um, you know some further developments in this test. We know so that for many cancers, early detection really is key. It's a matter of life or death. What about ovarian cancer though? Does that earlier detection help to improve outcomes dramatically? We certainly know that women who are diagnosed in the early stages of the disease have a 90% five-year survival. Unfortunately, most women with ovarian cancer are diagnosed with stage three, four disease. And what that means is the disease is really advanced by the time it is picked up. Without an early detection test, you know, in breast cancer, there's breast screen and we have the, the capacity to, early, you know, detect disease in its very early stages. We don't have a population screen in ovarian cancer and so therefore so many of the women's you know early disease is missed and it's only identified at stage three four disease so would you like to see so one day there, there being a, a population screening program like mammograms for breast cancer or like we see for cervical cancer uh, would you like to see every year or, or once in a time period that people would be able to go and get screened for this Absolutely. We know that would be a real game changer if we could detect the disease in its earlier stages. You know, there's been huge efforts internationally to, to get a test. And unfortunately, none of those tests have sort of showed the specificity that's required to detect it in its early stages. So, you know, it's really why we, we advocate hard, you know, with Ovarian Cancer Research Foundation for increased funding into this disease, because it has been much more difficult to get the outcomes that we've seen in other diseases like breast cancer or bowel cancer or cervical screening. So that's why we're seeing the lagging in survival rates of just 49%. So, you know, it takes the whole of um, the, the government, it takes charities like ours and Ovarian Cancer Research Foundation and others to keep committed to this disease and, and to working really hard like the scientists are, you know, in this particular study that we're talking about today to improve improve outcomes for women. I think the women of Australia really deserve the attention on the disease and, and we're really thankful for these, you know, promising outcomes and we eagerly await, you know, the publication and the next steps about the, the potential of this test in the future. And just finally, what are the rates at the moment and, and are we seeing an increase in those rates over time like we're seeing with some other cancers? So there are 1,800 women who are diagnosed with ovarian cancer each year in Australia. We do know that 
ovarian cancer, like all um, cancer, is a disease of the ageing population. So as we live longer, we will see increasing rates of cancer in our community. And we also know that this disease in particular has a really brutal treatment regime and really the impacts of living after the disease. You know, if you've had a hysterectomy, if you've had your ovaries out and a, a young woman, you know, can't go on to have families, you know, we do know that this particular disease and its poor prognosis of just 49% are very challenging for women. So, you know, I think the key message here is that we need everyone behind this disease. You know, we want better outcomes for women. Women deserve better survival rates than 49% five-year survival. And, you know, we applaud what's been done in breast cancer and other diseases where there's been that really significant improval in survival. And we know it's possible for this disease. It just needs more funding. We need more people supporting charities like Ovarian Cancer Australia and the Ovarian Cancer Research Foundation and it's why we lobby heavily towards government to put more funding into this disease because we need more promising results like we've seen in this study that we've spoken about today. So well, yes, let's hope that we are on the cusp of something new in this space. So Hickety, really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thanks so much, Ashley.